Alright, 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 what's up everybody and welcome back down here in the bottom right side of the map. We've got Dark representing uh, Talon Esports. I almost said Dragon Kaiser Gaming there, but no, Talon Esports. Dark is a monster. He's playing the GSL Group B here up against Stats. It's the very first best of three in the group stage. Stats, the Shield of Aya, as he's known. And it looks like he's going to be going for a gate scout by the looks of things. Unless he's going to do the max packs no scout special. But against a guy like Dark, that's very dangerous. You never know when Dark's going to 12 pull and send a drone across to build a hatchery in your base. And interestingly, Dark... <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing because... Dark missed time sending the drone out by like 4 seconds. So he's ended up going for 17 hatchery even though there was no probe here. That's a very dark thing. Now, arguably, he does get a little bit more minerals out of this initially, because you can see he's already on 16 workers on minerals. The downside is that because that hatchery is later, it slows down both queens coming out by three seconds, maybe three and a half. Not the end of the world, but it's a small thing that does add up over time, because you really want those early injects coming out and that sort of thing. Um, stats, on the other hand, gateway into Nexus, and uh, that was a 20 Nexus, so very standard. Notice he's pulled one off minerals onto gas only after the Nexus goes down. So he wants the Stargate play, but he also doesn't want to slow down the Nexus or the Probe. So very optimized opening uh, in that regard for Stats. On the other hand, the fact that Stats did Gate Scout is pretty much the most conservative way you could play. And this is really awesome for me. If you guys wonder why I gush over stats, it's because I learned StarCraft from studying Neeb, Showtime, and Stats, the three defensive Protoss pillars. In 2016, early Legacy of the Void, these were the three guys who were at the very forefront of figuring out how to play PvZ. And they were unstoppable in that year. Guys, I gotta tell you, I chose a good time to learn Protoss. We had the Mothership Core, and whenever your opponent attacked, you could just overcharge pylons, which would turn them into a cannon temporarily. And it was amazing. You could do that up to four times. There was one patch where you could do it eight times. It would only cost 25 energy. It was amazing if you were a Protoss player and not the other races. <laughs> so it was a fun time. And honestly, these guys had such good build orders. Like I remember, um, I don't know if it was Drogo or Showtime. Someone got a, a hand. They were, they were like um, stats shared a replay pack with them. And they secretly gave it. They were like, do not share this with anyone or I will lose my stats friendship. But he was nice enough to share this with me, you know, on the condition that I don't show anyone. And I didn't show anyone, but I just I just copied a few builds off it myself and never never said where I got them from or anything like that. And I did them so poorly. I don't think anyone really learned anything. But I remember stats was like destroying at that time. And he's been in the military for a few years, but he's still a very top tier StarCraft player. His defensive prowess, second to none. Overlord, gonna see that Oracle on the way. Now, Dark does start a fourth Queen. He's been droning pretty well. He's got Overlords on the way. No massive supply blocks just yet. So, I gotta say, Dark's opening is looking pretty smooth. And having four Queens out, two in the main, two in the natural for the first Oracle, is big. But you also need to have enough Zerglings to deal with the Adepts at the same time. Because a lot of the top Protoss players, they'll pair these Adepts with the Oracle. If the Adepts can pull the Queens out of position, the Oracle can do massive damage. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, one, oh, miss, miss target fire there for stats, that was not an effective first wave, to be fair, he doesn't lose any units, but the hit points going down in that oracle very much reduces its follow-up efficacy. Now, we've got two adapts there, third base is down just before the four minute mark, second gate walling off the natural, third and fourth gate, this is just textbook, the only thing that's missing is because this pylon was a little late on this third base, he did hit a very slight supply block on 54, uh, looks like another oracle does take damage there for yet again no kills, it says one kill, so I guess he killed a creep tumor he must have, must, if a creep tumor is still constructing, it doesn't show up in the two, this unit's lost tab, kind of like when banelings detonate themselves, there's a few exceptions where that tab doesn't work, five gates already, with no forge. Interesting. This looks like an aggressive blink opening for stats. The question is, is that I'm going to kill you with this? Or is it more of a... Oh, sorry. He got two drones in the back. Nicely done. Or is it more of a... I'm just going to poke and take a fourth behind it. Uh, you can't delay your forge too long. Stats there. Bit of a miss rally point. Fixes that up though. That's what I love about stats. He's, he's very organized on his efficiency. If he makes a little mistake like that, you can pretty much always count on him fixing it. Overlord speed's on the way for dark. What the... 
it's way too late to be doing a German taxi, in my opinion. And yet this looks 100% like Dark. Wait, wait, why is he... Is he just massing Lings and he's going to go... Ling Bane Queen drop? Dark, are you drunk, mate? Five Gate Blink shuts this down. So I, I was wondering, what are you going to do with Five Gate Blink no upgrade? Of course, he's just going to use it to defend. He's playing Dark. As long as you have a lot of unit production, you're safe against Dark because he just does silly BS every game. This is a very smart way of playing. Um, the problem for stats is he hasn't realized what's happening, right? If he went into the third base and saw how low on workers that was, that would be the big tell. But he's going to bring his oracles back with his stalkers. And turning on both oracles to save the stalkers, worth it. Good start. Um, Dark is down seven workers right now. More pylons are building. Stats is coming forward. Yeah, so Stats is planning an attack. Oh my god, if he could kill those overlords, that would be huge. Blink ain't done yet, though, so he's got to get away from the queen so that the oracles can cover him. And look at that. The, the queen's going to take out the oracles. Nice forward drop. One oracle goes down. The links are getting shredded. Another oracle goes down, though. Oh, Blink not being ready is a bit of a disaster here for Stats. He's got to get out. He's got to get back. Battery's only now getting up in the third base. Extra batteries building in the natural, but five gate Blink warp-ins is pretty huge. That natural is super wide open right now. That's one of the big problems he's got. I love the creep spreading on the front for Dark. Overlords do unload, but one of them does die inside of the transport. Queen's starting to fall here. Nice Blink back micro so far. Stats going to pull back towards that. He hasn't overcharged just yet. Now remember, he's only got one pylon powering the battery on the left side, so if that pylon goes down, he will lose that. Stalker's doing pretty good. Stasis trap there, freezing a single Zergling to block that right side of the mineral line. Ling Bane Queen moving in. This looks like it should be a decent hold for stats, but he's going to take a lot of damage on those probes as the Banelings roll in. Being said, good spread on the probes. The Banelings are trying to hit the Stalkers, and they're not very effective at that at all. The Stalkers are killing it. If he can get a few Adepts and stuff walked in, walked in, they'd be good versus the Zerglings. He blinks forward, does stats, but as the Zerglings come forward, they will take out a few of these Stalkers. But I think he's got the numbers now that stats doesn't really care. He's way ahead in this game. I mean, this if it wasn't Dark playing, this would be game over. Since it's Dark playing, he has a 3% chance of victory um, from here. Essentially, that's a failed all-in attack. He doesn't even have his third saturated. He's trying to go Hydra Queen Zergling now. So he's going for round two of an all-in. Stats is taking gases behind this. I do like the idea of a few Banelings morphing and trying to run in the mineral line, you know? Just, it's a, it's a low investment, high potential payoff. Forge goes down. Interestingly, there's a lot of Stalkers in the main. So Stats was expecting like a drop in the main. And it's a Forge and a Robe. No, he changes his mind. He was going to go Robo. Now he goes Templar Archives. Uh, Mass Stalker is all he needs to defend. The thing is, the problem now is Dark is basically like, I'm so far behind, I can't drone up. And then he starts, don't, don't drone up. He's droning now. Don't, oh no. And now he's taking, Dark. He's expecting a counterattack, so he's invested in a ton of Hydra Zergling, but he's realized, well, I can't kill you, so I have to go back to droning, but he's down 20 workers. Okay, this is, I mean, if Dark wins this game, he, he he's going to get that wizard title, that's for sure. He's going to get a free ticket to Hogwarts. Hagrid's going to rock, rock up in his motorbike and say, get in the friggin' side where it's taking you on a ride, man. And I don't know if they have Stranger Danger or not in Korea. Do you think they teach them that? I feel like Korea is a bit more of a trusting society. Maybe? I don't know. Three more gateways do go down. That's going to make it eight gateways. I like the semi wall off there. High Templar are gathering energy for Storm. I was about to say he hasn't started Storm though, but there we go. He does do it now. And we've got 56 drone lair tech lurkers. Oh, me oh my. Dark, yeah. So basically Dark is just going to slowly drone up, try to camp on lurkers, try to get to Hive. To be fair, Stalker Psystorm is good at surviving. It's not good at actually killing Lurkers. So if you guys are a big fan of stats, you want to see him get, you know, lots more Robo production out and uh, Charge as well. Because Charge gives you a lot of mobility to just get in the back and split the Zerg up. Uh, and Robo, of course, are mortals. Disruptors are units that can break through Lurker defensive positionings. Now, I still think stats could kill him with a big Stalker Storm push potentially. But... Even though the army right now for stats is way better, it's an army that does hit an expiry date against Lurkers. And that's what Dark's uh, aiming for. Dark says, well, you're on Stalker Storm because you're worried about me all inning again. Very good defensive comp, not a good late game comp. Let's just turtle up to Lurkers and see if I can drag my butt back into this game. 
charges on the way as well as plus two attack. Second forge coming down as well, which really does increase your power as the game goes on. He's already going up to 12 gateways, is stats. Notice stats pile on placement, guys. He's always got tons of production space, lots of areas where he could build buildings. Stats is, is one of the guys you really want to look at when it comes to just like the methodicalness of his openings, much like innovation used to be for Terran. Stats is a fantastic guy to copy the, the raw basics of the build orders. I would say you usually want to make the builds a little bit safer than his builds. And the reason for that is just he's so good. At least back in the day, I had this mindset of he's so good. If you copy his build order down to like the second, I remember Gemini used to do this a lot. I was always like, that's going to get you killed because you're not stats. You know, like you do want to have like a little bit more noob friendliness baked into a build. Generally, it was, was always my attitude. Now he's got a second Stargate, Fleet Beacon, second Forge. So stats is really camping it out. When you've had this sort of early game, camping like this is a very bad idea. Stats should have been more aggressive. He should know that he has a massive numbers advantage. And by sitting back, he's giving Dark a chance to recover. Um, don't get me wrong, getting the fourth up very carefully, not a bad idea. But I would have loved to see Stats push forward and kill him. Now, I think there's people out there who would argue. They'd say, well, if Stats is just the king of late game, why not just play this style if he's confident at that stage? And you're absolutely right. If he is incredibly confident at the late game, then sure. But he's going carriers and mothership right now. He hasn't started air weapons, which is a, a big mistake. He's got to start air weapons as quickly as possible because otherwise those carriers uh, will simply lose to hydralisks. And there's only eight hydras out right now. Not a lot of anti air. No spire for Dark. Dark's still obviously not in a great position, but you can see that he's been down 20 army supply for a while. And yet because Stats is playing so defensive, it's a lot like watching Showtime where I go, hey, wait a second, you were ahead. At the very least, you should have been clearing creep, threatening, sniping a fifth base when it goes up. You know, it, it, there's a lot more activity that could have been done here for stats. So not too confidence boosting for the later stages of this series, if he is this turtly. Plus one air weapons does go on. Spine crawl is being masked by Dark, getting ready for any zealot run buys. Still building 11 more hydras to finish his kind of max out army. Second Lurker upgrade's on the way. He's going to need to build a Spire, though, pretty soon. If he doesn't get a Spire and start working on those upgrades, there's always a point where there's, like, eight carriers with plus three attack, some shield upgrades. If you're only just starting your air upgrades at that point, your Corruptors really can't hold their own. Nidus Worm is up. Is it loaded? No, the Nidus Worm is empty, but the Double Overlord going in the back stats should realize what this means. Yeah, we're on stats camera, right? He's moving Stalkers up here. He's trying to deny the Nidus attempt. Let's go back to everyone's vision. Lurker Hydra sieging that right side. Storms across the wall. Not a bad way to, to clear up those first Lurkers. Down here as well. These Lurkers starting to pick off some uh, probes. As well as some gateways. And mortals do beat Lurkers pretty hard. When they're able to land shots on them. But because the Lurkers have almost double the range. 10 range against 6. It is uh, hard to actually get that position to go correctly. Stalker's being split pretty nicely. So the Nidus Worms haven't gone up. Abducting Mama! Mama does go down. She pops a time warp nicely. Does slow that army. And Stats is going to go for the counter attack rather than fighting into the entrenched position. Great choice, but abduct on a carrier. Nicely done. Carrier goes down as well. Storm on lurkers is much like tickling your older brother while he's holding you down, his knees on your chest, and he's punching you in the face repeatedly. Tickle, normally not a in completely ineffective maneuver, but when it's escalated to full violence like Dark's doing right now, Storm on Lurkers is, is almost pointless. It really is just tickling your opponent in a fist fight. It does nothing. Uh, Nidus goes up behind this base. Stalkers come forward. It's going to pop some Lurkers there. If you don't have detection, that could get out of tro out of uh, control. But, oh, the revelation. Okay, no, no. The Observer got up there pretty quickly. Nexus going down in the front as well. Stats is taking a lot of damage and Dark is back in control. And he starts a Spire behind it. Dark and being completely dead eight minutes into a game, into looking like the game's completely even at 15 minutes. It is just a standard Dark game. We shouldn't really be surprised, and yet I continue to be. Big problem for stats. Remember, guys, his army has hit the expiry date. You do not want stalkers more than... Uh, 10 stalkers is fine. Any more than 10 stalkers is terrible. 26 stalkers? That's useless supply. They're really not the unit you want right now. New Nidus Worm going up in the main base. Stats doesn't seem to have noticed it. Uh, getting a few cannons around the edge could be great. He's also got four stalkers nearby that could handle that. Another abduct goes down. Looks like a carrier and a high templar do fall. We've already seen two carriers, mama, and two high templar go down. Nidus in the main base does pop up. Looks like some units on the right get cleaned up by a few stalkers. There's nothing inside that Nidus worm. He realizes, wait, we're here. We might as well pop out in that main. Unfortunately, he's a little bit too late to unload. 
and the Stalkers do clear up the main base. Plus two ship weapons is on the way for stats right now. Stalkers on the right side with the battery overcharge can definitely handle these Hydras. Down in the center, Lurk is starting to come forward, but the Immortals clear the front layer. Only one High Templar left in the mix, though. Good feedback on one of them. Nice Storm. Does push those Hydras back as well. Units lost tab. Two and a half thousand in favor of Stats. And Stats hasn't taken a crucial blow to his economy. Yes, he lost his fifth base, but he's still on 70 workers. He's feeling okay, and I like this move. Moving out, denying the Nidus Worms. Uh, I'd also like to see him have a Carrier or a Void Ray or something. Just clear all these Overlords on the edge. You know, get rid of the vision so those Nidus Worms can't keep going up. Zealot Stalker counterattack on that right side. Going to go forwards. And uh, we do see air weapons on the way for Dark. He's also going plus three, plus two. Upgrades are about to finish. 3-2 is already done for stats, as stats does start ground armor and plasma shields. Stalker's retreating on that right side. That's a good choice. Nidus Worm goes up behind the third base. Ah, it doesn't feel like stats is aware of it. He might have noticed just now, but as long as you run the probes away, you should be fine. Nothing inside the Nidus Worm once again. Every time he does force uh, gateway units to warp in, that's kind of okay. Ah, a bit of an awkward position for stats here. The Hydra's getting a pretty good fight. Stalkers do end up pushing them back, though. You don't want to get caught too deep by Psystorm. Stalker's going to counterattack down here as well as pushing through the middle. Very important for Stats to clear up this creep. If you can push uh, Dark back into his territory, that will help him out. Stalker's trading on Spinecrawlers. Good trade there for Dark. Ooh, Zealot Stalker actually catch a few of these Hydralisks. Even going to get one of the Lurkers almost, but the Lurker barely burrows. It does hide itself. Multiple Stalkers going down. At the same time, Nidus Worm in the main. There's still 16 Stalkers on this map. But remember, clearing those Stalkers out for better units is good for Stats. So... Even though these trades might not be the cleanest, he's still cost-efficient overall. And uh, he's, he's kind of saying, okay, let's replace that with carriers. Let's get more upgrades. Do all those important things. And the Stalkers do maintain control of that right side watchtower, which is pretty damn powerful. New Nidus Worm in the back. Man, having to warp in more Stalkers really sucks, though. I'd love to see him using Zealots. And remember what I said, why do we have so much supply pinned at home? Unless you're using these Nidus Worms as a way to drain Dark's resources in the super long term, saying, hey, this is cost inefficient. I mean, that's, that's a very meta play because you, you have to be very, very uh, confident that none of those Nidus Worms is going to get out of control if you're doing something like that. Plus three ship weapons is on the way. Plus one plasma shields, plus three armor about to finish. Stalker counterattack moving down the south of the map. Dark right now builds a second spire to go next to his first one. He's building mass spores and spines as well all across these frontal areas of the map. Still mostly on Hydra Lurker as Burrow and four Infestors as well as Neural Parasite do come in. Drones getting transferred for Dark. Oh, Psystorm's coming down. The Abducts. It looks like a few Vipers got feedbacked. But he kills the Mama and he's going to take out that Prism as well. Nope, Prism does get covered by Psystorm. Yeah, no more carriers went down. Those Vipers need to pull back and gather energy. We were talking about that this in that video I did talking to Cyril about how a lot of players forget to, to, to leave those Vipers gathering energy. Oh my god, he's going to push you! Stats! Stats clears the front row of Lurkers. Very decisive. There's more Lurkers behind it. Stats needs to get out of there. Kill the hatchery and pull back is probably a good idea. See what I'm talking about? The Vipers. There's only one Viper with energy. But you know what? It's enough. He gets rid of one carrier, gets rid of a second carrier. And as long as he doesn't get hit by Psystorm, he might just barely have enough Hydras to deal with these uh, Interceptors. He's trying to come forward and fungle those carriers so they can't escape. Microbial Shroud goes down as well. Whoa, Dark takes out another two, three carriers. Make it four. No, can't quite get the four. The Sight Blocker in front of that tower does stop him. But Dark getting some juicy fights there. He's only down 3,000 resources and the units lost. And remember, Dark has, uh, well, actually he's only on five bases. But if he can reestablish this, he'll be on six bases. Stats has not established control of a sixth base. And this is a big problem Protoss runs into in the late game is getting these new bases, you really need to like get your cannons and batteries up to help establish that location. And he's going to go for the far left side. Four Stalkers moving in from that bottom area. Eight more Lurkers are morphing for Dark, which is probably a good idea. Two more Stargates building. So he's going to go up to four Stargates, his uh, stats here. Plus three air weapons almost finished. Unfortunately for Dark, he's forgotten about his spies. Well, actually, I don't think he's forgotten. It's just he lost so many units in those last fights. He spent all his money remaxing, and he's still focused on this Hydra Lurker Viper army. 17 Lurkers, 30 Hydras, 3 Infestors, 2 Vipers. Storm can ruin his entire day if it lands on those Hydras in the middle of them, but if he can dodge the feedbacks, dodge the Storms, get abducts like that, and Mama goes down number 3. That's the third Mama to go down. Damn, that is, that's very costly. Minus 300, minus 300. 
Or is it? Yeah, I think it's minus 300 these days. That's how much that costs. 11 more probes went down as well. Stance economy not looking that great. He does have a, a bit of cannon battery up on this base, though it could get harassed behind the mineral line. Four more carriers are building. Stats is trying to go to a much more Skytos focused army. I'd like to see Dark preparing those extra air upgrades to be ready for this, but right now he's being very successful on the ground, and oh no, you tickled two of my lurkers. You know, the, the storm on the lurkers is so ineffective. Hydra's coming forward. Probes thought about fighting for a second before they turned away. Good choice to get back with those Hydras, and he's thinking about popping inside the Nidus, maybe just using it for a bit of creep spread. The creep has been pushed back into the, the Zerg corner. Trying to respread that creep just to get more vision and control can be huge. Oh my god, the High Templar! Dude, Stats needs to run these probes and get out of here. Storm is not doing anything. If you've got disruptors, it's a different story. I really feel having two disruptors in your army in these scenarios is a game changer. Just because it, it's so much more something that Dark has to respect. But as it is, Dark's army is looking pretty good. And I think Stats is just going to wait for the full 11 carriers before he fights. Oh, nice feedback, Storm. Two infestors and a lurker go down. Great, great little engagement there. And that's it. If you can catch him moving forwards, you can do pretty well as Stats. Stats still has a lot of money in the bank, as does Dark. Dark loses his sixth base, but of course, Stats lost his fourth and fifth, which means Dark should have way better income right now. Another carrier gets abducted and taken down. Lurker's moving forward. Decent storm to chip at those Hydras. He's waiting for all the interceptors. He's just going to have to go for a big air fight. There's not enough anti-air to fight the carriers. Stats needs to stop waiting, though. Honestly, he should leave his ground army behind and go for pure air. He's going to go with everything at once. He's in a little bit of panic. He does cloak. There's no overseer. There's no overseer. Oh, my God. No overseer. And the Nidus Worm gets sniped. Oh, no. Dunk. Dunk. Oh, a huge oversight. I mean, I know he sniped a lot of the motherships, but not having an overseer there is so costly. The three mamas went down and did nothing. Fourth mama absolutely destroys. Now a 4,000 resource loss deficit. Don't get me wrong, Stats is on the warpath. He wants to keep going. There's Hydra's building. Parasitic bomb goes down and the carrier's once. That's an AoE tickle. But Stats splits it off from his main carrier pack. Pushes forward. Six base gets denied again. Darks back to five base. Stats has a new fresh base on the left side. And I think Stats can just keep going. That being said, lots of energy on these Vipers. Oh, there we go. Oh, abducting tons of carriers and mama in, but actually he doesn't have enough firepower to take on all those carriers, does he? The lurkers are doing okay, but there's not enough hydras on the ground, I don't think. Fungal to try and slow down those interceptors damage. Abducting too many units with a lot of hydras that hadn't rallied. They're all chilling back there. I think maybe he spread those to dodge the high templar, but maybe they just weren't on the control group. You never quite know with dark. Hydras coming forward, but there's so many size storms. And it does take, remember guys, it used to be three fungals to kill a high templar. It now takes four fungals. Because remember, that got nerfed to 25 damage rather than 30. A High Templar has a total of 80 hit points, including hit points and shields combined, of course. So, it, it, you know, if you do three full fungals without any overlap, a High Templar still has five hit points left. Whereas it used to do 90 damage, it now does 75. And that is a big difference. Makes a, makes a big difference uh, in those kind of fungling your opponent's spellcasters down scenarios. If that Lurker could get up there and land on those probes, that would be big. Uh, the clicking on the gas there, I, I always find that very dangerous, but... Stats seems to have calculated it pretty well today. A few Stalkers trading with Hydras down there. Lurker gets cleaned up. Stats has rebuilt the middle. He's building Mass Carrier once again. Uh, Dark has just given up on air upgrades. I think he's like, no, nah, we're too far behind. I have 3-3 three, three for Hydras. Let's make it work with Hydras. But as we always say, you need enough Lurkers to kill the High Templar. You need some Abducts, some Neurals or, or Fungals. And then you can technically beat the Protoss army. But it does require a lot of things to go right. For you as the zerg player it's easier if you're defending with spore crawlers look at this here we go gets feedback but he already gets the abduct down so the first carrier goes down and archon gets picked off that fungal completely whiffs but it is what it is lark is trying to push forward because he's like yeah if i can clear the high templar then i can unleash my spellcaster hydra fury on this army but stats realizes how perfectly set up the zerg needs to be and look at that gets a few feedbacks on those infestors nicely done Ark on his stray down here. Hydra's going to go for the counterattack. Good choice by Dark to make things a little bit chaotic. He could recall. He could have recalled on that, but he didn't make the decision. And now we've got a bit of a base trade on our hands. Oh me, oh my. Infestor's taking big damage. Parasitic Bomb is going to take out both Observers. That's a big Parasitic Bomb. It just killed both Observers. Damaged the carriers a lot as well. The base and 23 probes just went down. All the Hydras are coming back. We haven't really done as much critical damage here stats as, as, as he's taken back at home. So he really needs to do more. And remember... You, you have so little income with 22 probes, you might even end up losing the game because you don't have enough minerals to, to rebuild your interceptors. That is one kind of thing that can happen in these different weird scenarios. 
Uh, Zealots in the main going to do pretty well versus those Hydras because Dark's so so afraid of the army at the front. Oh man, that's that's really good trade for stats on those rallying Hydralisks. Units coming forward. Bottom left, Stalker is damaging the hatchery but not quite killing it. Three probes are being rebuilt at a time. Trying to get this mining back up is stats. He's let Dark drag him into the muddy waters down into the low economy messy game and I really feel that's the whole thing when you're playing Dark in PvZ is just don't let the game get this messy. Keep it clean. Keep it calm. Keep it collected. Because Dark is a, a master garbage man. He'll take the waste out like anybody, you know? A lot of people, they're, they're good in a clinical kind of office situation, you know? Stats is like, let me fill out your, your bloody taxes and your forms in triplicate and we can bloody go in there in the spreadsheet and get it all organized. Meanwhile, Dark's the guy who rocks up to your house and with like, I don't know, he's like the handyman who kind of fixes shit kind of dodgily, but it somehow works. Like he's just got, he's got a hammer, he's got a box of tools, and he just like sticky tapes random things together and makes it work, but watch out! Oh, big recall in the main base. Mama sneaks into the main base. Archon carrier storm inside the main. He's going to clear all the tech. Remember, he can recall home as well, but he's got to be ready for it. He's got to be ready for that. Carry a High Templar Archon in the main base. Spires are exposed. They're going to go down as well. Stats, if he wants to recall, he needs to do it now. Too late. I think it's too late now because those Hydras can just click the Nexus if they want to. Lots of workers going down. All the tech does go down in the main base. Okay, he could recall here. And I think that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Dark needs to run. Dark sees the recall graphic. He's got to get out of there. He's got to try and run home. I like the idea of just chasing him down. Like go straight diagonal in this direction as stats. But watch out with that prism. He's got some stormy droppies. Stormy droppies. Oh, stormy droppies! Very nice storms all over those hydras. No escape for these hydras, mate. Any whole, uh, any any pack of hydras was a goal for those storms, and they just landed big time. That should be a game-winning move, I believe. That is is massive. He just catches like 30 hydras on the way home. There's five hydras left and seven queens that shoots up. That is not a big anti-air army. Stats held the all-in at the start. You'd think it would have been a game over from there. But Dark inspires so much fear in his opponents, combined with stats being overly defensive this game, that it took him 27 minutes to finish off his opponent. That's about as difficult as it gets. Dark, as always, so hard to kill. Yet stats showing he's in form. He takes map one. All right, all right, all right, guys. We're here. It's game two. Dark uh, basically doing a kind of scrappy all-in. It's not the worst. As much as I felt like it wasn't an early timing, I always have to make the addendum here afterwards where I go, look, Dark's timing attacks, those crazy queen drops, they hit very late, but they're very hard to scout. And that's what makes them powerful. Unless the Protoss player is smart like stats is and they just blindly go five gate blink, which completely blocks it. So <laughs> very safe build order, which of course stats could have used to be aggressive if it turned out Dark wasn't going for a big attack. And I, I wouldn't mind him doing the same thing again but what i would prefer because i think after that last game so, so here's my thoughts right dark's gonna say okay you're gonna play very defensive stalker storm the counter to that is to rush hive and get very early lurkers out so i think he's gonna try and skip roach and skip banely nest play just ling queen into hydra lurker and just do a big like nine and a half minute lurker push with just lings hydras and lurkers very good way to kill a player who's got psych stalker uh sty storm and has delayed their robo tech a lot, which is how stats played that last game. I, and, and you know, it's stats, he's kind of predictable. He could do the same thing again. On the other hand, if I was cheering for stats, what I would say is actually because of that, this is a perfect time to do a timing attack. I, and I mean like a much more committed, not just five gate blink. I'm talking about a two base friggin' immortal charge push, uh, three base, you know, with just maybe, maybe, Maybe it's only 50 probes, but you transfer fake workers to your third to make it look like you're probing, and you always keep building probes out of your third so that when they scout with Zerglings, they think you're probing. Then you just hit like a big surprising attack. Maybe the old triple oracle into eight gate, no upgrades, no twilight, no forge, just stalkers, sentries, adepts, zealots, you know, a really surprising fast attack. So I'd like to see that from stats. I doubt he'll do it. Because, you know, whenever I'm talking about a guy like Showtime or Stats being aggressive, I always say, well, he could do this. He's unlikely to, but he could do it. Oracle gets one drone, two, not bad. Ah, that's way better than last game. Remember last game he took about this much damage, but did not, no damage. He didn't kill any uh, drones that time. Links come in, they see the third two adapts. Nexus, second Oracle's out, third one being chrono boosted. Looks stock standard so far for Stats. We should be seeing, he once again gets supply blocked on 54. So this might be a planned supply block in stats build. Stats might have decided, you know what, I don't mind getting a little bit of a supply block on 54. 
Ooh, that Oracle rallying in. You've got to be careful with that. That's a real rookie move, and he doesn't even click it back far enough. So he takes massive damage on a second Oracle. Two Adepts for seven Zerglings. Not the worst trade in the world. And I thought he was going to try and catch those Zerglings, but doesn't feel like spending that energy just yet. Oh, there we go. Hey, he gets four of them. Not bad. You got lots of energy right now. So uh, the, the rookie move I was talking about, guys, is if you're going to click your oracles across the map or in general, anytime you're going to click harassment across the map, it's always better to click the oracle here or here, somewhere somewhere out of range rather than going so deep. Now, this is a, a huge Roach Queen all in. It's an even faster attack than last game and Stats has nothing to deal with this. So Stats best play here is to probably give up the third base, build a shield battery there. His Forge and Twilight's not even up. He's only now building a third and fourth gateway. The best build against what Dark's doing here is probably the, the Hastam 4-gate. Um, remember, Hastam used to go 4-gate Stalker off Triple Oracle before building the Twilight and the Forge. Um, because you're never going to have Blinken plus 1 ready for a build like this. Oh, he's just going to fight the Spore Crawler. That's a crazy move. But you know what? If you put your opponent back to 1-base mining, that's pretty damn effective, isn't it? <laughs> he's going to go into the main as well. The Lings are trying to overwhelm the third, wisely pulling back. He's like, well, if you're only mining off one base, I can lose my third, no worries. And he's building extra pylons, cannons, and batteries. Sentries as well. Very smart play here by Stats, who builds a Dark Shrine because he sees no lair. So that's a reaction. This is a very smart play. Now, Dark started droning, but he needs to build queens at home. That's, that's the big thing. His queens have turned around. Yeah, I think that makes sense. His queens have literally turned around, realizing, well, I'm not going to kill you on two base. But you're building all this static defense. Too many cannons. Stats is playing too afraid right now. I think he should realize in a moment, hey, he's brought his queens home. This is no longer an all-in. Oh, trades in adept for a Ravager. Let's use a few force fields as well, but those Ravagers are a very limited supply, so good choice by Stats. Cybercore rebuilds, starts building a few more gateways. Blinken plus one finally starting. I like that he's canceling a few of these static defense structures. He was building way too many of those. And the Oracles could come home and clean those Ravagers up, but he doesn't have enough energy, I feel. Ah, uh, he can kill one. Maybe he maybe gets a second as well. That could be worth it. Drones running to the front. That's going to be a misclick. Nice transfuse for Dark. Saves the Ravager. Now, I think this is a very salvageable position for Dark, as opposed to the last game, because that third base is not down. Stats is going to, of course, very quickly rebuild that third. And he should be continuing his probing and just rally over there pretty much immediately. Five gateways are up. It's going to be seven gateways. So three base, seven gateways, plus one blink. He's going to have a third oracle out. He's building a robo. Starts playing pretty chill. And I'd like now Dark to go for that plan I talked about with rushing towards Hive Tech Lurkers. Um, probably off about 72 workers. You do need a fourth base for gas as Dark, but we're not up to that stage just yet. Ling's coming in. Uh, don't think that's enough to fight this. Not with force fields being available and the oracles coming back. Five more drones building infestation pit. Yeah, he's going to go straight hive. Smart man. Smart man. I like this play for Dark. Now, obviously I say that. Dark's the kind of guy who whenever I predict what he's going to do, he's like, no, I'm making roach infester or something really silly. And you're like, no, don't do that. That's not a good style. And he's like, y'all tell your face what a good style is. Hasn't started the hydrogen just yet. Normally, you'd start a Hydroden. He's going Knight of Swarm Host. Oh my god, Dark, you troll. Okay, so a um, bit of an odd choice. On this map, though, you can throw it from here into that base, which is good, and from up here into this base. So there's that plus threatening Nidus is in the back. You've got some pretty good angles. You've also, if you've got good creep spread, you can just run your Swarm Host back and forwards and do it that way. Now, Blink is normally the counter to this, but I think Dark is just kind of going, hey, I'm just going to mass these units and... and you know, get get out Roach Swarm Host on three base mining. I've got enough Roach Ravager Zergling. If you come out to fight the Swarm Host, I can surround you. And uh, if you don't come out to fight me, the Swarm Hosts are going to wear you down. A few more drones are coming in. Nidus Worm gets spotted. Does he realize? I wonder if Stance realizes what's up. He's got a second Forge about to finish. He was thinking about taking a fourth base. That cannot be the priority right now. And look at that. He does get rid of that Overseer, which is huge. Oracles take out a Ravager in the middle of the map. First Nidus Worm on the front. Doesn't have many Stalkers. Stats supply blocked at a terrible time. This is a really bad time to be supply blocked. Luckily, he's got a lot of cannon battery here. But, ooh, does he focus that pylon? No, he's going to go for the tech. Okay, Twilight Council will go down, as will the Forge. Oh, that's a good, that's a good double snipe, man. It's a good double snipe. 
fourth base does go down, Twilight Forge needs to be rebuilt instantly. There we go. Good good choice. You know what? He doesn't lose economy, though, so I think it's okay. Now, you got to be careful with your energy. A lot of Protoss start just panic turning on their energy to kill Nidus Worms. And then you end up just a new Nidus Worm pops up and your Oracles have no energy. And you really want those Oracles to help defend your army. This army's so small for stats right now. He's going Storm 4th base probes. Uh, stats needs to be making nothing but Stalkers. And, and the fact is, he's really not respecting this very much. I do... Okay, he's making a King DTs. He's going to try and do like a backstab, I think. Oracles see the Swarm Host coming in on the right. But look at this. The Roachling's going to run in on the left. Might have to use these DTs to defend. Locust coming in on the right side. That's a dead Nexus. Ne dead, no cancel. Now, surprisingly, the Roach Ravagerling didn't commit on this left side. I thought he would, but I guess there's so much battery spread everywhere that it's kind of hard to force his way in there. Oracles come forward. The DT's going towards the fourth base. Uh, get out of there, stats. Oh, he barely gets... Okay, one, one DT goes down. The other one does escape. Second Robo, Robo Bay's on the way. Stats will be going for Colossus. You might be wondering why. Colossus is very good for dealing with the Locust, so I would expect two Colossus to come out, and then he'll swap into Immortals, Disruptors, and all those other units that'll deal with the Lurkers. These are good choices. Dark's Hive Tech is not that fast, and his worker count's only 67. But catching Stalkers in the middle is still good. He's still up 50 army supply, which is kind of massive. Oh, Swarmos on the left. Okay, Oracle's going to need to turn those lasers on, man. Storm's pretty damn good. Great force fields as well. Good storms. Yeah, good storms, good force fields. Um, battery overcharge could help a little bit. Locust coming in on the natural. But those Locusts weren't being microed because he was distracted at the front. So a lot of them are kind of hitting just random structures. I would say not the high value targets you'd really want to be uh, getting. You get, what, a, a few static structures in a gateway? Only one probe going down. Great size storm. Ooh, might be worth blinking on this army and chasing it down. The Oracles did clear the frontal Nidus Worm. There's one just behind it, though. As I said, they're going to throw so many Nidus Worms. It's dark that stats can't clear all of them. And the Lurker transition is on the way. Uh, looks like the Stalker Sentry do catch that Nidus Worm as well. Oh, he didn't quite get it. Ah, there we go. It does take that one down eventually. Trying to buy all the Observer. The Dark Classic. Now, Dark does have plus two verse 1-1. One, one. Plus two attacks on the way for stats now. Stats never made charge or used his second forge in the main, unfortunately. Swarmo is going for that fourth base again. But the army's nearby, and remember those two Colossi. He's actually going four Colossus. Colossus aren't great versus Lurkers. I think stats is overcommitting to Stalker Colossus right now and Storm. None of these units are good versus Lurkers. Okay, good size Storms. I think he lost a High Templar or a Stalker there, but does mostly deal with this Okay. Colossus, as you can see, killing those locusts very quickly. Good vision now for stats. Dark has a fifth base and a sixth base building. Second Evo Chamber on the way, plus three range coming in. He wants to add some carapace and melee upgrades in the near future. Extended Thermal Lance, plus two armor and plus two attack on the way for stats. Plus two armor just started, whereas the attack is finishing. So slight upgrade advantage to Protoss right now. Mothership's on the way as well. Oh, trying to take out those Swarmos, gets rid of one of them. And he forces the Locust out very far away from his base, so he can just ignore that and run away. Great move. Roach run by in the top, could go in there, but I think there's plenty of Protoss to shut this down. Does pull the probes away. Dark wisely splits his units. He only leaves a few Roaches there, and they don't really get that much damage. Down here, a Stalker goes down, and that's it. A few more Stalkers warp in to stop a follow-up Nidus Worm. One Roach gets left behind, a little bit sloppy there. Stats, you can tell, is feeling the chaos. Dark, with his one Roach in the back of that base, is gonna start killing these probes, and Stats does finally warp in a few Zealots, realizing what's up. Second and third Stargate come down. Fleet Beacon is, of course, already up, as Mum is about to pop out. And what is the play for Dark? Because he's, he's really taking his time. Just looking for efficiency with the Swarmhosts. He has been slightly more efficient, but you want to be a lot more than slightly more efficient when you're playing Swarmhosts. Swarmhosts are, are an, a unit that is very supply intensive. 33 supply being effectively kind of wasted on those Swarmhosts right now. Oh, there goes plus three attack. Forge does go down in the natural. Lurker push over here. Oh, those Stalkers on the right. Very exposed. Where's the rest of the army? Army's down here. This is what I was talking about. You've got no counter to Lurkers as stats. I mean, luckily for stats, there's nothing that shoots up here. There's only one Overseer, but you can't fight into those Lurkers. This army is, is, is it's an anti-light army. It's not really an anti-Lurker army. Oh, maybe he can. 
Oh my god, no charge on those Zealots. It kicks in only now. High Templar going down. Colossus taking big damage. Snat's taking a, a very rough fight. Stalker Zealot counterattack is nice, but he's got to get out. He has to blink out now that he sees those Locusts there. And he does indeed choose to do just that. Oracle Revelation comes in and luckily for Stats, the lack of anti -air means those Lurkers have to retreat. It buys him a moment to gather his forces. He's got to put back on mining. He's got to make more stuff and uh, and try to get some sort of army up that can deal with it. But Dark is relentless and you, Nidus, inside the natural. Dark's got control of this game. Even though his work account sucks, he's just got to find that finishing blow. If he can find it in the next two minutes, he wins this game. If he doesn't, stats may start pulling ahead of him simply due to the mining disparity, at least in the work account. Yeah, yeah, and even in the minerals. You can see Dark's mineral income sucks. Colossus, deal with the Nidus Worm. Nicely done. Hydra's on the left. We'll take out these guys. Oh, no. There we go. Three Stalker kills. Very valuable. Queen's here trying to get focus fired. Oh, nice. Stasis Trap caught those Lurkers above this. But actually, the Queens are beating the Stalkers. How often do you see that? The plus three Queens with mass transfuse actually did very well against those Stalkers. That's hilarious. Stalkers are a much higher damage unit, but the transfuse was worth its weight in gold. Oh, no, no, no. Stats! Stats! Oh, God! He's got no Immortals in here. He doesn't have a lot of anti-lurker units, but with the cloak from the Mama and a few other units coming in the storms as well, it's enough. Zealots do clean up the Nidus on the left side. I mean, right now, Stats is maxed out. I feel like he needs like four Robos to build a proper army comp against this. Um, carriers are coming out though. He does have plus one ship weapons against the plus one carapace, which is, you know, it's okay. Storm on those lurkers, but look at this. This base is in trubs. He's going to have to pull back those probes. If Stats loses all these probes, his economy is down in the dumps. Lurkers slowly getting cleared. And it's, it's not a bad engagement for Stats, but he's got to be... It, it's the base going down that's the problem. You know, army versus army seems all right, but he is down in the units lost tab right now. Nidus Worm... Oh, sorry, not Nidus Worm, but the, uh, the Swarm Hosts on the front going to engage, and they take out an Archon. Almost get a second one. Battery Overcharge saves the day. Zealot takes out the base in the south. Stalkers come in and trade. Another Stalker for a Queen trade there. Dark, this base is his lifeline. That's his fifth base. If you look at his income, you can see he is... They're both on nothing. Um, so it's, it's one and a half base mineral mining for both players. Remember, you get about 800 minerals a minute per base mining. And they're both at about 1,100. It's not a great economic situation. The next fight should be deciding this game. Though, of course, Dark with his Swarm Host efficiency may be a bit more patient than we would otherwise think for a 55 drone Zerg player. Most players on 55 drones against carriers are dead, but he's made the game scrappy enough, low economy enough, there's not that many carriers. And what a mess of a series this is. Remember, this all started with that early Roach Queen push from Stats, uh, from Dark. Stats denied all the mining on his natural for about two minutes with his oracles while that was happening. It's a weird start. Giving up the third base's Protoss never feels great, though. Five Lurkers get frozen by Stasis Trap. Immortals can definitely wreck this army. The Storm does tickle those Lurkers down. And don't get me wrong, it's worth storming them. It's just not a super high-impact thing, which is why I keep mentioning that Storm does just tickle them. Zealot Stalker on the right side here. Oh, watch out for the Viper Abducts. Oh, Great Abduct gets himself a Colossus. He's going to try and sandwich with Locusts from the right side by the looks of it. They have to kind of throw the Panic Locusts out as they do get caught. And the Locusts go in. Don't really kill much. Hydra's on the left trying to push forwards. This base, if this goes down, it's a big problem. But Dark has set up a perfect siege angle. He can get a few more Abducts off. That could be huge. He's looking for the Abducts. Nice feedbacks. Stats, very slick feedbacks there. He's going to have to give up this base though. Stats fights into those Lurkers. He's screwed. The Lurkers are in range. The Carriers pick one off pretty nicely, actually. He's got to run those probes right now. Get out of here, Stats. Stats, if you can pull back, you can salvage this game. Stalker Zealot denying the creep on the right side is a very good move. Oh, the Lurkers are going to keep pushing forward. I don't think he expected that. I think Stats is expecting him to rotate to the right. But look at that. Dark's like, oh, I'm just going to shove forward on this angle. I'm going to just keep going, man. And there's no... Oh, there's, there's no Storm in here. Guys, there's, there's, there's five High Templar... They almost have Storm. They'll have it in about 10 seconds. Nidus Worm in the north. Going to try and distract while the Lurkers continue to push forward. 31 Hydras and... Uh, oh, no! Only plus one air weapons. Plus two carapace is done. Plus three is on the way, which means those carriers are not going to be very effective against these Hydralisks due to the upgrades. Locusts hit the left side. They're going to come in, go after that expansion. Will they be able to take it out? Yes, they will. Even if he overcharged and healed that, I don't think that would have saved it. Those Locusts had a lot of time to work. 
A few disruptors would have been very nice in this game for sure. It is a bit awkward to micro, but definitely I'm always a big fan of just two disruptors. I don't think you want a lot of disruptors because obviously too much of a commitment to them uh, is a bit one dimensional, but just having a few balls to drop on these lurkers, like whenever they're like this, could be absolutely devastating. Storms are tickling away on those lurkers. They take a bruising. They don't go down. Stalkers on that right side are getting pushed back by a squad of Hydras. Dark forces the army up there. He shoves the left. He shoves the left. Stats out of position. Stats cannot be so far out of position, man. But he is right now. He's way out of position. Oh, this is a, a big problem for him. Oh, looks like a high Templar just got picked off by the Hydras. Dark with some nice micro. He's looking for the Archon as well. The Hydra Lurker breaching the natural. Dude, the way Dark is bullying stats is incredible. Does take out a bunch of Stalkers on that right side. On the left, Stalkers going down to the Hydra Lurker. Stats trapped between a Locust and a Lurker place. And that is a terribly moist place to be. And i got to say, guys, when you're playing against Zerg, you want things to be dry. You want them to be dead. You do not want so much biomass on the floor. Bunch of High Templar go down. Few morph into an Archon, which will potentially die as well. Abduct Mama does get picked off. Remember, that reduces attack speed as well, that attack, that big bubble. Tries to escape with whatever Hydras he can. Dark loses a lot of units, but at the same time, he shoves the Riot. Denies the last mining base's stats. Stats is almost completely out of minerals. Just a few patches left on his third. And throwing Locust before potentially popping back into the Nidus Swarm. A crazy move there for Dark. But any kills he can get, he figures are a massive value pack for him right now. Spinecrawler trying to defend this fourth base. Hydras should get there just in time. And that's going to be that. I think that's going to be that. Remember we talked about how Stalker Storm is weak to Lurkers. Stats too far behind in supply in that game. And too much commitment to Colossus. I do think the first two Colossus were a great choice. I think if he'd swapped into Immortals or Disruptors after that, that would be a different game. But you've got to be careful getting cornered on Mass Stalker's Side Storm. The pressure of the Nidus Worm Swarm Hose getting to stats and Dark ties up the series. All right, all right, all right, guys. We got Dark at the bottom right side of the map. Tying up that series nicely with the Swarm Host Nidus metagame. Stats in the top left. I do feel like stats could have gone harder into Blink and pushed out a bit more aggressively against Dark um, to, to kind of really slow down that Nidus pressure. And if he manages to do that and establish a fourth base, I think Dark's in a lot of trouble. In my experience, I know, I know talking to Showtime and, and other guys, generally charge is an amazing opening if you can go charge a mortal. The reason it dies is Swarm Host Nidus, but most of the European guys have always said, Zergs and Protoss alike, that if the Protoss goes blink, they should always be able to defend the Swarm Hosts. Obviously, things can go wrong. It's a Starcraft game, but they're, they're very much like, yeah, you, you should always be able to defend it because the blink gives you such mobility, but stats didn't really use that mobility in the sort of clearing the map way that I would have expected. Oracle building up here in the main. Guys, we were talking about alcohol just between the games in my Twitch chat. And a guy just said... Someone just said, we have this beer with tomato juice and Maggi seasoning. Like Maggi, like instant noodle chicken seasoning. <laughs> what? <laughs> Where are you from, Biani? And what beer is... Please, more info. I want to talk about this between the game. Zergling run by gets in, but luckily the Oracle is here. Oh, it's, you know, has to use up all of its energy here. Finally gets rid of all but one Zergling. But Dark being a nuisance. Ten Zerglings at home. He's down five workers right now, which is pretty standard for this stage of the game. But if he can shut down the Adapts, and already he's defended the first Oracle, right? Because it's it's had to use its energy at home. The Zergling goes back in in the main. And he's just wasting mining time and making it hard for Stats to micro on the front. Stats should be cancelling that shade. And indeed he does. Zergling's still chilling in the main base. This Adept is like, leave my goddamn base, dude! It looks like it will finally take out that last Zergling. Adept's on the other side are threatening the shade. Great multitasking for stats. So this scenario is the nightmare. If you're not like a stats caliber player, you lose the Adept's on the front, you lose five probes at home, and your Oracle wastes all of its energy. But stats handled it really well. Even there, he only loses one Adept, and he's going to shift click a few of these drones down. Where are the Zerglings? They ran in the wrong direction for a second. What the hell? Oh my god, and there's, there's nothing here. 
The Queen's moved so far forward. He loses four drones. Make it six drones. Oh, damn. What was Dark doing? Moving his Queen so far forward. That was a crazy move. And he gets punished big time. Nine drones go down. And the Evo Chamber's spotted as well. The Evo Chamber tells you that Dark is going to macro this game. He wants a fast fourth. He wants a plus one melee. He wants a lot of Zerglings. It's very hard to do an all-in with an early Evo Chamber. You normally want to have a good economy to make this work, you know, because you don't have any weird aggressive option to catch your opponent off guard. Now, the Adepts are going to go through the middle. There are three Oracles out. Oracles come forward, but I don't think that was worth it. Gets a Creep Tumor and that's all. Third base getting chronoed. He's up to four gates, Twilight and Forge on the way as well. Well, four gates coming up, I should say. Adept's moving into the natural, but the shade gets cancelled wisely. Dark needs that fourth base. He needs it up soon. He's got the drone waiting. He's got 300 minerals, but you can see he's very busy defending the Adepts and the Oracles right now. Fourth base finally goes down. Lair does start behind this. Dark's done a great job of recovering. Fantastic job of recovering. That was a very rough start. Oh, did he just get an Oracle? Oh, he just got an Oracle as well. Stats. From a fantastic start to now losing a little bit of that momentum. Templar Archives goes down. Stalker Storm is going to be the play. Stats wants to turtle up. He wants to play a very defensive style. And Dark says, I'm going to take a fifth base. Now, I would expect Dark to go... S you know what? If Sorry, if it was Solar or Rainer, I know those guys love going Ultras from here in this scenario. Just straight Infestation Pit when the Lair finishes. Go straight for Ultras. Get a second Evo for Carapace and, and, and kind of, you know, work up into that style. Which is a very good style. Oh, I like this wall off, by the way, guys. The only entrance is here into the mineral line. Single stalker can wall that off very nicely. Problem is, obviously, if you do get this pylon blown up or something, you've got nowhere really to run except this tiny little hole on the bottom. But it is generally hard to get in there. Infestation pit went down instantly along with second Evo. He's doing it. Dark's going to play ultras. Ultras are also pretty good against stalker Psystorm. Um, you'll need to see stats go for immortal production to deal with that. Uh oh. As good as Ultras are when they're a surprise and in the immediate term, they do fall off pretty hard in the long term. Once you get a critical mass of Immortals, the only exception to that is if there's really good Blinding Clouds and all Neural Parasites. Neural Parasites stealing the Immortals, Blinding Clouds trapping the enemy army so the Immortals can't attack. These are the things that tend to, to ruin it. And I mean, that's minutes down the line. Right now, Stats doesn't have any Immortals. He's just got his first Robo up, so... He hasn't even built a single Robo unit. He's thinking about how do I defend Ling Bane Ravager. And there's even a... Sp Dark, you meant to make Hive. Okay, there we go. Hive and Spire. If you're in Broodlords, the Carapace doesn't serve much function. So I think he just wants to unlock both Broodlord and Ultralisk tech to have options. We might see one of these special dark builds that is kind of a bit confounding. I like that he's not building Banelings. I think that's a very good idea. Stats is down 8 workers, 72 workers against 80. Banelings does go down now. I mean, Banelings, they're good for run buys. It's good to be able to mix them in. But it's way too late for Banelings to be like a core part of your army that you're super relying on. Storm and Archon's going to hammer them. And remember, you've got four High Templar, or six actually, gathering energy the whole game. So they're going to they're gonna be maxed on energy by the time the big fights go down. Um, plus two attack, plus one armor on the way. Stats will be getting great upgrades. He's only on single robo though. And he still doesn't seem to fully realize, I would say, what he's up against. It's an overseer in his main. He's going to warp in a few stalkers. I do like that he's only built four stalkers this game. I think that's the best part about what he's done. And actually a second robo goes down and a mortal production. Very nice. Stats Stats is getting well set up. Mutal... Oh, dark, dark. Okay, this is the this is a terrible mutalist timing, guys. Seven mutalists at nine minutes is is basically like I just want to throw some money away. This is the a terrible idea for dark. I'm gonna be very harsh. Now, to be fair, dark's the kind of guy who has a spidey sense to do something that on paper is terrible. He'll find twenty probes and make it super worth it, and I'll have to eat my words. I I can almost guarantee it because if anyone tells me you're hitting it ten minutes, not what it's nine and a half minutes. With seven Mutalisks, I'd be like, he can just do one Stalker warp in and you're not going to achieve anything. But he's going to sneak it in. And that's important. If you sneak it in. And Stats is on the map. Stats does have 11 gateways. Okay, let's see. These Mutas might actually get sick value. Problem is it's slowing down the Hive tech of Dark a little bit. Let's see if he can make this worth it. It's forcing a lot of Stalkers. 
You could argue Stalkers aren't great versus Ultras, so it's a pretty good idea in that regard as well. Recall in the main. Those Stalkers will take out one Mutalisk, two, and three. Not too bad. So only four Mutalisks left. Not enough to one-shot a probe. As long as you have like a cannon in each mineral line now, you should be fine against any follow-up. So I'd like to see a cannon in the main as well for stats. And then he can just bring those Stalkers back to the front. Four more workers building, plus three attack, plus two armor on the way. Those Mutalisks definitely weren't worth it, by the way, guys. Because now, the, the, the thing is, they're just kind of wasting supply a little bit. They're not really doing that much. Uh, Ultra Cavern is there, but he hasn't remembered Kindness plating. Dark's a little low on gas. He might think he started it. Because he's gone Adrenal, Burrow. Plus two Carapace, plus three Melee, Overlord Speed, Bailing Speed, Greatest Buyer. He doesn't actually have Kindness plating starting. And I don't think he realizes... Because the fact that he's already building an ultra, that is a bit awkward. Oh! <laughs> Morphs an Archon up front. Zealot's trying to hide behind the minerals. Zerglings will catch a glimpse, as will these roaches. I mean, this is start sort of game right now. Rolling Banelings, and remember I said, yeah, you can try to get some harassment in, but in a game like this, Banelings are just throwing money away. So hopefully we don't see too many more of those. Ultra's building, he still doesn't have kindness plating. Huge mistake for Dark. That's going to be less two armor on those Ultras. Very important against things like Stalkers and Zealots especially, but still makes a difference against the other stuff as well. Cannons and the like. Mum is on the way. Still only two Immortals building at a time. In this scenario, when you've got this much money, four Robos is a no-brainer. If you have four Robotics, you can very quickly rebuild that Immortal count. Stats has the money for it, but no one really did four Robo except Patience in the older days of uh, Legacy of the Void, so unlikely he'll ever go past two Robos. Immortals coming in. Yeah, these, these Mutalisks achieve nothing. So Mutalisks are all about timing, catching your opponent off guard, and getting some momentum. Uh, yeah, he forced some Stalkers off them, but I, I don't think that's really worth it. So not a great play for Dark. He does catch an Archon on the front. That's nice. The Mutas are still being distracting, and he's just not responding stats. Stats gets jumped on at the front as well. He loses two Immortals when he's not watching. Banelings are getting in that mineral line as well. Oh my god, Stats is making a few mistakes. Dark with that ability to get under his opponent's skin and force mistakes. Finally, a few Stalkers there. These Archons could have moved to deal with this at any moment, as could the Psy Storms. But look at that, fifth base gets cancelled in the south. Great way of trading off. Roaches, Lings, Muters. All of the garbage units, all of the Garbo Zerg have just been traded away. And he's replaced them with much better units. Now, those Mutalisks are still hanging out. I feel like he probably should get rid of them just to clear up supply, but I think he's decided, hey, if I force more cannons in the back, batteries, random stalkers left around, I can create some chaos. Look at that single burrowed Zergling giving the finger to that probe. Says, you can't build here, idiot. And this army for Stats. Stats has to reassert control now. Uh-oh. It's main base. I mean, he's got cannons everywhere, so actually, I think I don't think you can really do anything getting into this base. I definitely think Zealot Warpins rather than Stalkers is better because they're cheaper, they don't cost gas, more expendable units. Roaches do take out the Immortal, get rid of a cannon, not too bad. Yeah, Dark's trading out these Roaches as best he could hope for while preparing a Broodlord swap. And interestingly, there's no Stargate transition in this game. He's just going for plus three armor and plus one plasma shield, so Stats has actually really changed his MO from game one and two where he was so Stargate obsessed. To just playing mass ground. I do like the Star Nidus Worm and the main Mutalisks are going to get taken down by the cannons. Uh, he actually is watching, funnily enough, so the Mutalisks survive for a little bit longer to be a nuisance. Zealots do find the Nidus Worm. Ultras! Oh, Nidus Worm goes down, but the Ultras pop out, causing some issues. Roaches being a nuisance here as well. Dark really is just multitasking to be a nuisance. As you can see, Stasis Traps do not affect Ultras because they are frenzied. Ultras in the main going to cause some issues as well. Stats trying to defend on the south with the Stalkers on the north with the Immortal Archon. He's going to need to recall into that main base though. Oh, good block with those Stalkers. Should trap a few of these Ultras. Ultras killing Immortals in the main base. Single Immortal, no match for two or three Ultras. A couple more probes have gone down to these Roaches as well, as well as that Mutalisks. This is hilarious that Dark is finding damage right now simply through multitasking and Stats not handling the Chaos correctly. So... Stats, I mean, he did use recall eventually. I think these units recalled and then just walked out of the main base because he's F2-ing. Oh, no! Stats, he recalled the units and then move commanded them back to the front right past the enemy ultras and muters. Oh, stats. I mean, Dark gets under player's skins and he has this ability to make his opponents play down to his level. It really is his skill, you know? Everyone thinks they're going to play a clean stick to the game plan. Dark gets in there, starts talking smack, doing weird little run-bys, burrowing ultras in your main base. 
and suddenly P Protoss players start panicking and making all these weird, uncharacteristic mistakes that they normally don't do. Now he's got 2 1 on the flyers. We've got 12 Broodlords here. Dude, if he hit a nice Broodlord timing, it could do well. But Dark's missing spellcasters. He really needs Infestors and Vipers for the efficiency. And as annoying as he's being, and he did keep stats off a fifth for a while, the units lost is still 4,000 in favor of stats. Oracle, Cannon, and Battery trying to build in the main base. Nothing inside that Nidus Worm. Stats is attacking himself. Army on the top, Blink on the south. I don't know about attacking right now. This seems kind of dangerous. But it looks like the Nidus Worm does go down. Banelings in the top are going to come in. Is Stats watching? I doubt it. I doubt Stats is watching. Oh, he is! Great defense there with the Storms. Um, is going to still take a lot of damage, though. Ling Bane on the south. Stalkers will be able to defend this. Banelings are going to roll in and do a lot of damage to the workers, though. 15 probes go down. And Ling Ultra in the north as well. Oh, no. Stats economy. This is why I didn't really like him pushing right here. Because the Broodlords defend him at home and he loses so much economy. Oh, Dark, the wizard. He just says, oh, you think you can attack me? Because I've, I've been attacking and you've been defending all game. Now it's your turn. Have fun, idiot. You move out. You lose 30 probes. You take tons of damage. And obviously that doesn't feel good. We've got one observer on the map and it's there. He's using oracles for revelation. Needs to rebuild cannons and stuff. He's warping in store. Oh, no. Stats making stalkers, guys. Guys. Remember, translate that Australian. If you hear me add extra syllables in there, no. That's when you know it's a bad decision. Those stalkers are not a great unit. I mean, obviously, he can use them to deal with the Broodlord, but with 12 uh, Broods, 9 Infestors, I don't think he can push in. There's new Nidus Worms popping up. There's new Lings running in. I, I don't think stalkers are the endgame unit you really want right now. I'd love to see stats slow down, probe up, transition to Sky Toss. I wouldn't mind him killing a base and running away. Just don't commit to fighting into the enemy army. That's the scary thing. Ling's in the main here, but the Stalkers will defend. Start stabilizing on his defense. Doesn't have any mining on that fifth mineral line. His workers are in chaos right now. A lot of his gases aren't mining as well. He's got a ton of gas. Oh, his High Templar! His High Templar just all got called out. He's lost six High Templar this game. He's got none up. He's trying to rebuild probes. Stats needs to get back on mineral mining in a big way. But, I mean, Dark is making it tough for him. With no Psy Storm, you have to get out. You can't fight this army without feedback for the Infestors, Stalkers for the Broodlings and the, and the Broodlords. That's huge. He's only now rebuilding his Templar Archives. It died to the Ultras. Oh, Stats is reeling in this game. Even though he's been a few thousand resources more efficient, Dark is just making it chaotic. And, and you can see that Stats is like three steps behind. He's like, why can't I make High Templar? What's going on? Oh, crap. I lost my Templar Archives. When did that even happen? There's been so much going on. Now, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean Dark's won the game. Dark still is very much not a, a technical late game player. He's a ha ha, I caught you out of position here and there and everywhere sort of player. So if Dark wants to finish this, he will need to start transitioning his work account down, building more static uh, to, to you know help protect his bases. And uh, I think a few Vipers would be game changing because Blinding Cloud against 36 Stalkers could absolutely crush... Only two Archons and no High Templar for Storm. Ling's actually very good against this setup. Battery Overcharge is going to go down as well. Stats is maxed. He's got a recall. Oh, God. Stats. Stats. What are we doing? Oh, no. He recalls to the northern base, which, I mean, I guess he'll defend that, but he's already lost every probe on this base. Zealot's now warping in as he loses all those probes. He does at least snipe one of Dark's bases there, as well as this base on the south. The Stalker Immortal's going to get broadsided, though. Great engagement angle for the Broodlords. Broodlord's very happy to just take that fight, pick off a bunch of these Stalkers and Immortals. Look at that aggressive starter step for, for Dark moving forwards there. He's going to try and chase this army to the corner. Mama's going to slowly pick off that Overseer as she drives past as she's a moving shoe unit. He's going to recall. Uses Mama, recalls the units from the bottom left to his main army in the top right. That was a brilliant move. For those who don't know, the uh, Mom, pick me up. Ah, uh, you know, get me out of trouble free card. Mama is always there for the Protoss army when it gets out of position. Ooh, nice fungal, but not much to capitalize off it. Yeah, that Infestor gets shot down before it can fungal as well. You, I mean, fungling is kind of nice to slow things down, but you're not really doing much damage unless you've got other units there. And you don't want to lose these Infestors without the Broodlords. Big mistake for Dark to engage. Big mistake for Dark to engage like this. I think Stats is happy to trade Stalkers to get rid of all that energy. He's happy to do that. He's going to attack the left at the same time. Great moves here for Stats, using his mobility with a mass ground army with 3-3-2. Just using that mobility is the way to do it. Stalkers might not be amazing versus Ultras, but when you've got that many numbers, they can still focus them down. Now, he's got two High Templar now, does Stats. I'd like to see a lot more High Templar gathering energy for Storm Archons as well. 
and you can see the income is actually dead even on the minerals. Bit out on the gas, but Dark needs more bases. So I like, yeah, I like that base going up. And he kind of needs to push with his Broodlord somehow, but I think his work account's too big. Yeah, Dark really needs, needs to get rid of some workers. He just needs a little bit more army. Otherwise, he can't defend his bases. They're spread too thin. And a lot of his workers are just going to be long distance mining. Stalker mobility is dominating a bit too much. If he could surround one of these armies with like Ultra Ling Bane, maybe. But Stats has done a great job of splitting a good mix of army to both sides. Nice feedbacks. Pops a few Infestors. Loses two Archons, though. Total of eight Infestors have gone down this game. Army in the south is going to find a big force of Zerg. Ultra Ling Bane going for it. Ooh, the Stalkers blink back. Baneling's getting in, setting off the barriers, trying to do as much as they can. Doesn't have enough Lings to clear all the Immortals, though. And Stats, great fight there. He's going to push forward saying, you know what? I think I've got a moment here where I can do more. Maybe should have pulled back there. Nice focus fight with the Immortal on the uh, Ultralisk, though. Does do 65 damage a shot, remember, to, to armored units. And it looks like finally the Ling Ultra Remax starting to get some good trades for Dark. This is where... It's, it's when you suddenly lose your Immortals, you can't deal with the Ultras as well. You don't have any Archons, you can't deal with the Lings as well. But you know what? Stalker's actually taking good fights. 7,000 resource lost advantage in Stats' favor. Stats going to have to blink away and try to get back to the safety of the cannons and the batteries. Warping in more Stalkers on the south. Stalkers have actually traded really well. Dark has to be a little more cautious. And I would love to see him bring an Infestor or two on the south as well. Still no Vipers in the army. And still 80 drones for Dark. Zerglings do cancel a few buildings very efficiently. If you can deny this top right base, it could be big, but that's a lot of storm and a decent pack of stalkers. Enough to take out at least a few of these broodlords. But first broodlord volley takes out a stalker. Cloak gets activated. Overseer does activate pervert mode in order to counter it. Oh, Baneling run by. The Ultra Ling pulls back. Baneling's going to try to flank this. Stalkers aren't happy to just stand and fight it. Baneling's not the best unit in terms of cost efficiency. Just trying to force this army back. The Ultras on top of the Immortals is pretty good, though. Takes out the front line of Immortals. Banelings do crash through. Clear a few of those Stalkers. Main base, there's still three Stalkers sitting on front of this Burrowed Zergling. You can tell Stats never uses the F2 key, guys. He is an old-school gamer. He is an old-school gamer who does not spam F2. He's an organized gamer who wants his units to be in many positions at once. Stats is about as manual as they get, often managing five or six army groups at once. He loves to do it that way. He does not like to use those uh, shortcuts that were introduced in Heart of the Swarm because he knows if he does, those Zerglings unburrow and cause him issues. So just as a habit, he pretty much never does it and he just tries to keep track of multiple squads, rally points, and the like. Plus three Plasma Shields on the way. Hydrogen building. Dark's decided he needs Lurkers to deal with this ground army. Broodlords alone is not enough. I think he's right. I think he kept expecting stats to transition air and... Stats has actually pulled the 300 IQ move by, by just playing pure ground. That's the last thing that was expected. Ultras can't really get in here. The two cannons are, are definitely making a good account of themselves, but that Nexus falls very quickly to four Ultralisks. Looks like that base will get taken down in the south. Nine drones get taken down as this army comes in. Army of Stalker Archon comes home to try and catch the Ultra Zergling, or at least a little bit of it. Oh, this army in the south could take out that hatchery as well. This is where Recall gets very powerful. A Protoss who, anytime, he's like, oh, you killed a Nexus. I killed two bases, and I can recall out if you come down here. Clearing creep as well. Removes a lot of darks. Map vision. Double lurker den goes down. Dark is like, I desperately need those lurkers. If you have 12 broodlords with, like, six lurkers underneath, if they blink forward, they get absolutely evaporated. So a combination of lurker and broodlord is the ultimate ground army. But as we say that, Ling's on burrow, and they see there is a Stargate transition. There's now three Stargates, so so Stats is actually kind of ready for this. Nidus Worm is empty. Zealots will take that Nidus Worm out. Yep, not unloading Lings in time. Too busy trying to defend in the top. Broodlords will take out at least one Archon and a Stalker. Army in the south is clearing creep, though. Lots of Ultras. Lots of Ultras there. Queens should transfuse those. A couple Band-Aids would do very well. Dark realizes it. Starts to spread those Band-Aids across those Ultras. I do like to think, you know when a, when a kid scratches its knee and there's a tiny bit of blood but and it just starts crying because it's so afraid of the blood and it's like, ah, they're like holding their leg and pointing at it. They're like, ah, band-aid. And the moment you put a band-aid on it, they're just like, ah. I feel like ultralisks are like that when queens are around. They're like, mom, band-aid. She puts a little transfuse down and they're like, oh, it's cool. We can fight again. 
Ooh, watch out for those. Oh, Neuroparasite, revelate, revelate. He should be revelating the enemy army. Oh, oh. Does revelate the enemy army. Nice usage by Dark to revelate the Protoss to see where he's at. Knight is swimming this out. This could be big. Pop some lings out, cause some trouble perhaps. And indeed he will. Stats has 25 stalkers, three Archons, eight Immortal, six High Templar, and a Mama. Oh no, the High Templar! One of them goes down, make it two, make it three. The Broodlings are so much slower than they used to be. And a fourth High Templar goes down, but army in the top doing pretty okay. Oh, the Immortal starts in, good damage, but good starter step. Good starter step for stats. The moment you start starter stepping back like that, the Ultras lose so much power. Because it's move, shoot, move, shoot. Your whole army's shooting each time. The Ultras, of course, just desperately trying to get on top. Southern base does get saved by that recall. Remember, that means recall is on cooldown for another minute and a half. Uh, recall is available on Mama, though. So she can recall units to herself as needed. Income, about 2,200 minerals a minute per side. Uh, Protoss has this base reasonably fresh since it got denied so much. This base, very, very fresh. This base, completely fresh. Dark doesn't have access to as many bases. He's really only got his, his top right as well. It's kind of mirrored the bases that are still mining. But hold that thought, Broodlord's coming forward. There's a few lurkers on this map. Dark's gonna shift those lurkers forward. Archon goes down, High Templar goes down, and Immortal falling as well. Anytime you get caught by surprise, those Broodlords really can ruin your day. Tempest's starting up for stats. A few Hydras in the middle of the map. Ultra Ling goes for a counterattack. There's a bunch of cannon batteries, so that plus Warpins may be able to deal with this. More cannon battery on the south as well. We'll see how it goes. Broodlords are going to take out the northern base. No resources are left there. Nice counterattack for stats. Remember, he will have Mama recall, but he doesn't actually have Nexus recall for another 40 seconds in this game. And those Ultras getting great damage. Oh, he pushes into... Oh, look at that. Fungal plus Lurkers. He's actually taking out the Spore Crawlers decently as well. But, oh, the one Observer barely survives. And Dark is getting pushed in at home. Tempest coming forward. That's going to force these Broodlords to retreat. Remember, Zerg does not get recall. Dark is going to realize he's in trouble. Those Broodlords are going to have to run home. He doesn't have anything that shoots up. He's moving his three Queens over there and his two Hydras, the only anti-air that he has. This little army pushing in, looking to clear some creep. The rest of the army comes forward as well. Nice move for Stats there. Barely misses those Infestors with his Observer. This base is getting overwhelmed. Stats has a base to the south that's still stable. Tempest and Prism get recalled. I don't know where they got recalled to. Maybe to Mama? Yes, to Mama. So Mama brings the Tempest and the Prism to the front line. It's a big army pushing in towards the tech in the main base. Ultraling does clear the fifth or sixth base, whichever that one is of Stats. Stats southern base, though, has more than enough to defend. Moving into the main, the Infestation Pit did get left alive for now. Spires and Hive juicy targets. He hasn't rebuilt all of his tech, which I'm surprised by. I thought Dark would have already rebuilt his tech in the top right. You've seen him heading towards your main for a while. you got to rebuild that tech, dude! Uh, guys, he just lost his Hive. No Spire rebuild? I guess he's just so broke. He doesn't have a lot of money. But all he's got is Hydra Den and Infestation Pit now. Now he rebuilds his Sporting Pool. Oh, Dark with a huge misstep. He should have rebuilt his Lurker Den and his Spire before that went down. He had plenty of time to prepare for that. That's a mistake he's going to be kicking himself for. Normally Dark, very cool, calm, and collected in these chaotic games. But Stats is doing a great job of recall management. And really using all the Protoss mechanics to get out of trouble where possible. Can these units get out? Yeah, it looks like they can. Always sucks when you recall your units into a bit of a surround, but... Seven Immortals, four Archons, four Tempest, 22 Stalkers, two Adepts, an Oracle, four High Templar, and Mama. Those two Adepts, you kind of want to just die, but I think they're just left over from the early game, right? This one has 16 kills! Nine kills and 16 kills, that's hilarious. Probably a lot of those are Broodlings, I guess. Oh, Storm! Oh, Storm! Oh my god, Broodlords, Infesta! Oh, the Fungal, 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 Fungal! Oh, if you can get another fungal. Oh my god, great trap. Great trap here. Dark. Dark catching a bunch of those important immortals and archons. This is huge. This is huge. And if Dark holds onto this middle base, that's massive. Corruptors are going to get a Tempest as well. He's only got a few Corruptors, though. Only six Corruptors. That's a problem. He didn't rebuild his, his anti. I remember Hydras down here are getting pushed back. Hydras don't have any upgrades. He's just making them now. So remember, he went for Hydras super late in this game. This was uh, an Ultralisk tech game. Roachling into Ultra Baneling. The models do finally get cleaned up. Okay, so Stats has a fresh base. This base, base with four mineral patches. Trying to retake that one. Dark, fresh base. Completely fresh base. And a few minerals here and here. Uh, he just doesn't have the work account. Only 42 drones. So he's not really utilizing the, the, the number of minerals he's got available. 
that well. But if he can hang on to those bases, it's going to give him great future mining. And finding this base is massive. Corruptors come forward. Mama does activate her uh, cloaking field, but Broodlink's taking out an Archon and a Stalker. Seven probes going down. Ling Hydra's going to take out that Nexus. This is a big move. This forces Stats' hand. Stats needs to make something happen. And he's going to build more Tempest. Seven Tempest seems like too many. Uh, no ship weapons upgrades, though, so he does need at least six to one-shot the Broodlords. Whereas three three-air upgrades have been completed for the Corruptors. That's a problem, actually. 0-0 zero, zero Tempest, 3-3 three, three Corrupted Broodlord. But with no Spire rebuilt, no Lair even rebuilt. Dark is just like, I'm so broke, screw rebuilding tech. I'm just going to make Hydras. As I say that, he does start a Lair. But he loses his top right. He's losing his next base. Dark doesn't feel he can fight this. Oh, he re depowers. He depowers it. Stats has to recall. Stats has to recall. If he loses this base, Stats has got no economy. He's got to recall it right now, mate. He's trying to clump it. But he's already lost every probe. It's too late now. He might decide to just push. Oh me, oh my. Tempest, if they can focus down the Broodlords, could be massive game changers. Remember, there's no Vipers in this game. Vipers would be incredible. There's more Tempest than there are Corruptors. Transfuse try to make up for that Dark, being the Spellcaster wizard that he is. But right now, it is Dark with more income, but all he can build is Hydras and Zerglings to support his position. I mean, the Fungal does some decent damage. Mama activates Cloak again. Ooh, another Broodlord does go down there to the Tempest Focus Fire. Tempest coming forward. Mama's there as well. Another Broodlord goes down. Starts with the aggressive Focus Fire. He realizes there's nothing on the ground to stop him. It's just those six Broodlords. The Tempest hard counter them, which means the rest of the army can come forward. He's sent too many units to the other side of the map. And even though he killed Stats' economy, Stats is now going to punish him by shoving on the front, trying to retreat through a field of Spores and Queens, but there's just not that many Spores there. The Corruptors try to turn and fight along with these Spore Crawlers, and he will lose a few of these Tempests, but I think he's okay with it because the Broodlords have been pushed back. Look at that Focus Fire. The Pylon's even spotting for them. As the Broodlords fall, that is a disaster for Dark. He's just got a pack of Hydraling, a few Infestors. He's going to try and break into the production, maybe do a bit of a base trade, but look at that. All the drones get caught here. Beautiful there. And he's going to recall. Watch out, Dark. Watch out. Get out of there. Get out of there. Nice storm to land on the Hydras initially. Another storm goes down and stats. At the end of an absolute barn burner of a series. Does it with mass ground into an eventual Tempest transition. I love it. Very impressive play by him. I was not a fan of the seven Mutalisks, but otherwise I did like the way the, the multi-prong from Dark with like the Mutas distracting, then the Roaches running in on the south, the Ultraling Bane attacking from all sides, the Nidus Worms. Dark is very good at having a worse army than the Protoss, but abusing positioning to catch them out. And he kind of did. He sniped the Templar Archives. He sniped the Fleet Beacon at some point. He's killing gateways and probes galore. 140 probe kills versus just 69 drone losses. It goes to show just how effective he was with the harassment. But at the end of the day, the shield of Aya, that is a reason Stats is called that. He just holds his shield arm up and Dark is just bashing his shield repeatedly. And you think his arm's going to break off, but he's this shield of goddamn Aya, man. His arm might be shattered, but he's still holding his shield up. And that's why he gets that 18,000 resource loss advantage. Wins the series to start off the GSL's Group B. That was sick. GG well played, Stats.